Could you explain what you mean when you say high intensity? You know, when I'm when I'm thinking about like a vigorous intensity, high intensity exercise, it's 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 really the kind of exercise where you're getting your lactate levels up. Now most people aren't measuring their lactate, so that wouldn't be the best definition. It's 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 a type of exercise where you're really not able to have a conversation. Um, you you just you're not being able to talk because you're working too hard, mm. and um, and that's really when you're getting your your maximum heart rate up to eighty at least eighty percent or over. You know, is I would say pretty good range for people that are doing a more vigorous intensity exercise type of workout, whether at least eighty eighty five percent their max heart rate. But again, the talk test like you can't mm. you can't really talk. You know, you're just like there's some workouts I'm doing with Zia. There's just no, I can't talk in the middle of them. Like I'm working too hard. There's just no way. So yeah. I think that's a good, a good marker. Now there was a period of time where I was measuring my lactate and people might, maybe we can get into that. But I think for me, it's one of the most important components of vigorous intensity of high intensity exercise is getting your lactate levels up. And what is, what is, what are your lactate levels? Well, typically a person at baseline at rest, your average lactate levels are around 0.9 millimolar. So they're less than one millimolar. As you start to get exercising a little bit, you know, if you're in, if you're not doing high intensity, you're not doing vigorous, you're doing the kind of exercise that people often refer to as zone two, where you're able to talk, but you're a little bit breathy. Um, your lactate levels are still above baseline, but they're below two millimolar, generally mm -hmm. speaking. So that would be like the lactate threshold. When you start to get above the lactate threshold, above two millimolar, then you're getting more into the vigorous zone and you're starting to get up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, perhaps even more. Um, lactate levels are really rising. And for people listening, you know, lactate is – it was thought for a long time to just be a metabolic byproduct of mm. glucose metabolism. And it's, it's, it's just so much more than a byproduct. You know, um, what, what happens when you're working hard, really, really hard at a high intensity, you're, you're not able to produce energy quick enough, at, quick enough to bring oxygen to the little organelle that's making the energy called mitochondria. So you need oxygen to make energy, but you're working so hard that the oxygen isn't being transported there fast enough. And so mm -hmm. your body has to switch to using glucose without your mitochondria to make energy. And it's not the most efficient way to make energy, but it's quick. When you start to use the glucose outside of the mitochondria, it's called glycolysis, then you're making lactate. That's a, that's a metabolite that's, you know, in addition to the energy that you're making, you're making lactate. So it's actually used like glucose is used as energy, but even it takes less energy to use lactate to make energy than it does to use glucose to make energy. So it's energetically favorable and your muscles mm. use it for energy. It's also transported to other tissues, predominantly going to the brain during exercise. So lactate is a way for your muscles to communicate with other organs, other tissues like the brain. And so um, what lactate does is it tells the body, hey, I'm working hard. I need more of this other thing. And so in the brain, your brain, when your muscles are working hard, your brain is also working hard. So your the lactate signals to the brain to make neurotransmitters. Norepinephrine is one. Norepinephrine is involved in focus and attention. It's activating one of the most powerful neurotrophic factors ever called brain-derived neurotrophic mm. factor, BDNF. It causes your brain, um, particularly in parts of the brain that's involved in learning and memory like the hippocampus, you're making more neurons in that region of the brain. Mm -hmm. So that's really important for brain aging because our brain atrophies as we age. And so you're basically helping stave off some of that brain atrophy. And it also is very important for learning and memory, for improving the connections between neurons for increasing what's called neuroplasticity. That's the ability of your brain to be able to adapt to a changing environment. So, you know, things are constantly changing. And if you can't adapt, you know, it really hinders the way your brain functions and it causes depression as well. So, so lactate is so important for, for that as well. Uh, and I just, 
it's one of the reasons why I really like working out hard because I'm very focused on brain health. And I know that lactate is essential in that equation. And to get the lactate, you have to go hard. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not comfortable. So you're saying is getting to that level of lactate production, is that your threshold? Is that where you're on the edge of breaking down and um, whether it's not exhaustion, but what does it practically look like if you were working out, let's say you were doing a bunch of squats and push-ups and, and sit-ups, um, is that, is that where you're, you're at fatigue and you're pushing through? You, you can produce it before fatigue. Um, you just have to be working hard. Generally speaking, really it is just intensity. And so as you start yeah. to really get to that point where you can't talk, Remember the oxygen, when you're not bringing the oxygen to the muscles quick enough, um, you can't talk, like it's, it's, you're working so hard, your heart rate's up to like 80% max heart rate or above, you're starting to really get lactate levels up. And then mm -hmm. as you get to fatigue, then you're maxing it. You're, you're a huge advocate for high intensity. I've got a quote here that you say, intensity outshines volume for mortality. And I think what you're speaking to here, and then you can, uh, you can, kind of dive into it is the research that you've done is the volume meaning duration of effort so for low intensity efforts like your your zone twos um that will move the needle a little bit but it's very time consuming especially in our busy lives that in order to get some of the benefits from there you have to do it a lot for a long time when you could have that minimal effective dose of shorter durations um, and it's going to extend your your uh, your life. So, can you speak a little bit to that? Because I think your research into how you've you've highlighted how important intensity is over volume, and what 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 is volume in your in your eyes? Well, yeah, I think I think the the exercise volume is really the amount of time you're spending exercising, right? So, I mean, if you're someone that's doing a zone two bike ride or a run. And when I say zone two, I'm, I'm talking about like you can talk during the exercise, you're a little breathy, but you can still have a conversation. You know, if you're doing that, like, it's great. It's, 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 it's you know, that's, a, it's great to do that sort of workout. Um, but you really have to do a lot of it to get the same mitochondrial biogenesis benefits we talked about. Generally speaking, most people are not doing that type of volume of exercise where you're where you're training greater than 10 hours a week and you're, you know, probably running 40 miles a week or something, something crazy like that, where you're just, you're not, most people are not doing that. So I do think that the intensity is, it's not only time efficient, it's just so robust. You're, you're, mm. you're really pushing the system to adapt. You're really pushing the system to adapt. Your cardiovascular system has to adapt. Your mitochondrial, you know, function and your mitochondrial system has to adapt. Your muscular system has to adapt. You know, and so all these adaptations to that intense, you know, that intense push that you're that you're putting on your on your different systems, your lungs as well. All of that is going to lead to greater VO two max. It's going to lead to greater mitochondrial density better mitochondrial function is going to lead to greater brain function, more neurogenesis in the brain. All those things are going to happen when you're pushing that higher intensity because that intensity is what's causing and driving the adaptations, which is essentially what you're looking for. You're looking for those adaptations. And so you have to push hard to get it. Like if you keep doing the same thing every day or every week, you're not going to have like your body adjusts, right? Your muscles adapt. Like you have to constantly put more stress. You have to push a little harder. You can't just, you know, keep doing the same number of reps and at the same weight every single mm -hmm. time you work out. You won't, you'll have adaptations at first, but then it stops, you plateau yeah. and you have to push past that, right? And so that high intensity is is what you're doing. You're pushing past where everything is comfortable, all the systems are comfortable and you're forcing them to adapt even more.